What's good, YouTube? It's your boy HD, aka Textual Chatter, and today I'll be doing a reaction video to How I Pass Contia Security Plus in 30 Days, 2021 Study and Strategy Tools, and the YouTuber's name I'll be reacting to. Her name is Nicole Aness. I think that's her name. Exploring Cybersecurity and IT. I uh, haven't watched the video. Uh, you know, let's see what she says. In this video, I'm going to go over how to pass a Security Plus in 30 days when you know absolutely nothing about computers, but I'm also going to explain to you how you can understand the material in the quickest way possible and the most efficient way possible. So many people think that by reading the book is how you're going to gain the best understanding. I'm here to tell you that is completely false. Reading the book is the absolute worst way to understand the material and i spent way too much time reading the book and rereading the book and honestly i didn't even grasp the concepts and it was just um uh, I, I can agree to disagree with that one right there uh people learn differently i know for me when i took this test ages ago i only read the book and i did practice tests and i just was able to understand it because i didn't necessarily read this to pass i read it to understand i took good notes and stuff i didn't understand i came back and wrote down so you can understand it i'll say you can understand it to pass the test if you write it down so that's what i'll say so she's not wrong what she's saying i'm just giving you how you know what happened to me when i took it so let's go it's just a huge waste of time. So this video hopefully is going to give you a better way to study for not only the Security Plus, but all of the other exams that you're going to take in your IT career. I note that this is based on Ali Abdal's How to Study for Exams Masterclass, and that can be found on Skillshare. I'm not sponsored by Skillshare. So there are a few things that I want to include before getting into actually how to start studying. The first one is Parkinson's Law. This basically says, uh, the time allotted uh, for something will take that amount of time. So if you allot yourself three months to learn Security Plus, it will probably take you three months. However, if you allot yourself 30 days, which is what I did, it will take you 30 days. That's because time, the, the task will expand or shrink to exactly what amount of time that's given to you. It's some fascinating stuff. And also artificial deadlines. So I suggest from this day, go and book your test right now. That gives you a sure thing, like you're invested in it, you're gonna do it. Go right now, book, go, shoot. Okay, so let's touch on a couple of things. Uh, I didn't, I wasn't familiar with that law. She said Parkinson's law. I'll definitely have to look into that, but it makes sense. Um, but my deal is, I don't know a lot about her, so I don't know if she's in the field or not. Realistically, what do you, want to get in 30 days studying for this test i mean if your goal is to get a job getting this certain 30 days isn't going to help you get a job so i don't really know what the goal is maybe the goal is just to pass uh but what she did say about scheduling your test is definitely you know right on facts like q like when you set up your test in the beginning it gives you a sense of urgency to keep on studying that's what happened to me this is the reason why i uh, think of my cloud practitioner video which i put up right there that's the reason why it took me so long to take it is because I didn't schedule to take the test. If I would have scheduled it, I probably would have passed it sooner. So let's spin the clip. Shoo, just stop this video, go book. How <laughs> is motivation? Now you think you need motivation, but you absolutely do not need motivation. You, you're not gonna feel like studying for the next 30 days every day, but you're going to have to do it in a way, you're gonna have to force yourself to do it. And once you get started, honestly, it's easy from that. So the first 20 minutes is probably the hardest. And then after that, it's just kind of a breeze. You may even find yourself enjoying learning about the material. There are two things to remember when studying for the Security Plus. That's number one, you have to understand the material. If you just memorize all of the facts, it's completely pointless to even take the test. Um, memorizing facts like what a HIDS is, what type of attacks they are, is completely useless if you don't understand exactly what you're doing. So the first step, step number one, is to understand the scope of all of the material. And what I suggest for this is to actually get a book and then just skim through it. Try to understand 
all of the material. Don't read and reread it. Hey, she's definitely right though. She's on the right track saying, you know, just memorizing the facts not gonna really help you understand it. She's she's on point with that. She she's going somewhere. Let's keep her let's let her rock out. Make sure you have a good oversight of everything. So you're seeing the forest. And then you'll go into the trees later, but you have to understand exactly the scope of what you're doing. And then once you have a good understanding, you're going to want to remember. So that will be steps four and five. That's when you're gonna go into the details and you're going to use active recall uh, and questions and answers to, to retrieve that information so you'll be, be able to better retain it for the test. Step one, you're going to want to understand CompTIA Security Plus. Now, I suggest getting the book for this as I... Um, I, I didn't study like that. Honestly, I didn't look at any objectives or whatever. I just, I made a goal at this time. So I'll check this out. Summer 2013, I work in that Target. I said, hey, you know what? Every day, no matter what I'm going to read, I think I said I was going to read 50 or 100 pages. I can't remember. Oh, it was 100 because I ended up finishing the book within a week. But I went back the second week to look at anything I didn't really understand. But I didn't look at any exam objectives because truth be told, like this good information we're getting right now, none of that stuff was told to me. I always just, someone just told me was, hey, go get the sec plus. And that's what I did. So yeah, let's see what she's talking about. Said earlier, um, and the book that I recommend is Daryl Gibson's Security Plus. Uh, here it is. I'll also link it below and you can check that out. And so go over the book, spend about four or five hours briefly reading through it so you have a good understanding of what exactly you're going to do. Another thing you can do is you get the exam objectives and then also just briefly go through that and then kind of link them up so you have a good. This should take no more than four to five hours and this is day zero. So this, this is kind of your your prep work that you're going to, we're going to go into figuring out the details. Now I suggest video for this. So you have your book, but I suggest uh, watching Professor Messer's Security Plus uh, YouTube videos. They're all free. Now I don't want you to spend your. I've never watched the Professor Messer video at all. I hear a lot of people swear by him. I've heard mixed reviews. Some people like him. Some people think it's boring. Uh, I might be beating her to it, but I would suggest that you make a lab environment. Almost every chapter will have some type of lab you can do. And you do that to kind of get a feeling for what it's trying to do. It doesn't simulate the real world, but it does give you somewhat hands on on what you can do and what you can expect when you are potentially in one of these roles one day. Uh, let's keep it moving. Spend your time taking notes passively or highlighting or do any of that. Now, what I want you to do instead of passively taking notes is I want you to write your notes. Well, I guess they are notes, but in question form. So for instance, if you're talking about malware attacks, I want you to write them in question form. So if it's just like, what is a DDoS attack? Um, and then he explains it, but in your notes, right, what is a DDoS attack or what are the types of DDoS attacks? And it, or if you write all of your questions, uh, write all of your notes in questions forms, and, and this will help you with active recall later on. So now it's time to get- That's interesting because I'm, um, I'm, I think I'm getting what she's talking about with this active recall thing. If I write it down as a question while I'm listening and then I listen for the question, I can come back and answer my question I asked. Whereas a lot of times when you're just writing the notes, it's hard to answer the question. Uh, maybe that's where she's getting it. I've never did this thing before, but I'm always trying to find better ways to study because truth be told, I'm not that good at it. Quite honestly, uh, no matter if it's a big or small test, I'm, I'm not that good at test taking either. So let's get it. Time to get into the remember aspect. So you scope the subject, you have a good understanding of what exactly is happening. Now you're going to go in and you're going to start to remember those details. So I suggest using Anki cards and that's going to help with spaced repetition. Spaced repetition, the magic behind it is it's actually, it makes learning harder. And the harder learning is, the more you're actually going to learn, uh, which will help you way. And I agree because when I took that cloud practitioner, I didn't do as good on the harder practice tests, but eventually I did, but I learned more with those than I did on the easy ones. So I, I, I agree because the practice tests were harder than the actual tests. 
way more on a job than just memorizing a whole bunch of facts that you can't apply. Learn from my mistakes. Don't do that. And this goes into uh, passive versus active learning. So passive is just like mindlessly taking notes. Active is recalling information after you have forgotten it. So you're going to want to do it at intervals. You're gonna have to put in a lot of hours here, but trust me, it will be worth it. And it's building your foundation for IT for basically your entire career. So I really suggest putting in the effort. And also I would suggest using Anki cards and don't make your own. You can just get them on the internet. I'll also link those below. They're completely free. I suggest using them for spaced repetition. Um, and then you're also gonna wanna noticed. go over those questions that you created in step two, which was uh, going through the details, making questions instead of passively taking notes. And you're going to want to go through each one of those questions. And if you don't understand in something or you can't recall it, that's when you go into the book and you read just that portion. And I agree. Uh, I'm gonna cut a show right here. It's like two minutes left. I'm not gonna do the whole video. Uh, she's giving good facts on just how to pass the test. Uh, nothing more, nothing less uh, on the ends of how you be actually using stuff in the real world. So I just want to see what she was talking about. Definitely a good video. You guys, please go check out her channel. i try to see if I come across some more good content of hers. But uh, yeah, that's been a reaction video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, let's get textual.